Hi everyone. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you the winning reaction. Uh, so the reagents that we're going to be using today, uh, I'm going to start with benzaldehyde. Um, this is a rather simple aldehyde and it's going to uh, be reacting with my winning reagent. Um, so let's go ahead and just start by adding 0.12 milliliters of benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde, being an aldehyde, has a slightly positively charged carbon. to homogenize this and get the benzaldehyde evenly mixed into the DCM uh, by stirring. Uh, it doesn't have this in the procedure, but I'd like to be able to clamp this in my ice bath as it stirs. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glassware above this so that I've got something to use as a handle. Okay, so um, the procedure tells me that I'm going to use, or I'm going to wait about 10 minutes for this to be perfectly homogenized. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about the other reagents. I already said that the benzaldehyde is there as a carbonyl uh, that we can use. It's positive charged carbon. Uh, uh, we're going to react a negatively charged carbon onto that positively charged carbon. Um, let's talk about DCM. DCM is a great solvent. It dissolves lots and lots of things. It has a slight polar moment. Uh, it is acrotic, so it doesn't mess with acid-base reactions. Um, but look at all of those hazard labels. This thing is a powerful known carcinogen. It needs to be handled carefully, along with uh, being flammable and uh, many other biological effects. Um, so something to be handled carefully, but not avoided as long as you take proper precautions. Um, now the Wittig reagent is what I'm going to be calling it. Its real name is carbethoxytriphenylphosphorane. Um, now the whole reason to use this uh, is that this is a stabilized carboanion, a stabilized negative charge on a carbon. Uh, that is very rare in nature, uh, and so this has been synthesized to allow that to happen. Uh, but what this does is by introducing a very uh, stable carboanion to a slightly positively charged carbocation, uh, that will allow the electrons in the negative charge to attack the positive charge and form a carbon-carbon bond. Um, carboanions are highly reactive, so that's part of why we're homogenizing and icing this reaction so well, is to introduce this slowly and slow down the entire reaction so it doesn't occur violently.
Okay, so this has been homogenizing on ice for about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my wood equation, which means I'm going to take off my little handle here. And while this is stirring and being kept cold, I'm going to slowly start introducing my reagent. Okay, um, so we're back after about 10 minutes, and the reaction has completely finished at this time. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reaction off. It looks exactly the same because a lot of OCHEM is just mixing clear liquids with clear liquids. Um, I'm going to go ahead and isolate the product by removing the DCM by Airstream. And so I'm going to warm it with my hand uh, because the evaporation is going to cool it down rather quickly. And I'm going to blow air uh, into the flask. So, now that I have completely evaporated off the uh, DCM, the dichloromethane, um, I am left with a kind of gel-like mixture of solid and oil. Um, if you guys want to refer to the front page of the Wittig reagent, of the Wittig reaction uh, worksheet, uh, it'll show you that we've made two products here. We've made transethyl cinnamate, which is the oil in this. We've also made triphenylphosphine oxide, which is the solid that's clouding up the side of this container. We're actually gonna collect both of those, and we're gonna use their differing polarities in order to separate them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce hexane, five milliliters of it. And the hexane is going to easily dissolve the transethyl cinnamate but it is not going to dissolve the more polar triphenylphosphine oxide. So the triphenylphosphine oxide will be left as a solid that I can remove by filtration. And the transethyl cinnamate will be collected by rotavap by removing the hexane. All right, so this stuff is way stuck on the sides of my Container. I'm going to use a spatula to try to free it up a little bit more. bit of spare hexane on this, which I'm going to wet down my filter paper with. 
and then I'm going to try to get this all kicked up into solution so I can pour. And that worked okay. I got about half of it out. So I'm going to do as much as I can with the spatula to try to remove it, but I'm definitely just going to need to use some additional hexane to get this out of the container. I'm going to use another 5 mils. Oxide, the solid, it's hard to remove this way, but we'll try our best. And let's do one more extraction with hexane. You can see that I'm not being super critical of my measurements of hexane, and the reason why is because we're going to rotobat this. Uh, and so having a little bit of extra hexane is going to add another 20 seconds to my rotavapping. It's not a big deal. All right, that's the best that I can do for right now. Uh, so because uh, I'm running a ton of hexane over my triphenylphosphine oxide here, uh, and hexane is super volatile, uh, it is actually dry immediately. In a matter of seconds, it dried to a chunky white powder. Um, so this triphenylphosphine oxide, I'm going to collect. I'm going to collect a mass of it as well as a melting point uh, and send that information to you guys. So the next step, I'm going to take all of the hexane that's been collected, and this has a bunch of transethylcinamate in it. I'm going to transfer this to a round bottom flask for rotavapping. Um, like I said, I can use a little bit of extra hexane uh, just to make sure that I get all of my products uh, so I'm going to actually just rinse out that filter flask a little bit first. And some of you may notice that uh, I'm not going to sodium sulfate this. Uh, there's a reason for that. There has been no water present in this entire reaction. Uh, so there's no need to incorporate a drying agent step. Um, but I'm going to go rotavap this and come back. Okay, and so we're on the rotavap now, and uh, hexane, being super volatile, is not going to take super long. Um, you can see that it's condensing up here on our cold finger. Already starting to cloud up as the solvent is removed, and eventually I'm kind of effect I'm gonna assume it's gonna get kind of a snowball appearance here. Oh wait, I forgot. Sorry to mess with you guys. 
this is an oil. This product that we're collecting is an oil, so I just freaked myself out. Um, it's not going to solidify on the sides because it's an oil at room temperature. So let's kill this and see what kind of tiny droplet of oil we have collected here. I'm not even sure you guys can see that. If you see it from the bottom, then you can see just that droplet of mm -hmm. liquid which we have collected. Yeah. And I am going to get a mass and an IR of this, and this is our transethyl cinnamate product. Um, so I'm going to dry this off better so that the water on the outside of the flask doesn't mess up my weight um, and go collect that data for you guys.